All right. So let me just to catch people up. Right. For those of you that might be watching this video, um, we decided during Zoom today to talk a little bit about another example of um, osmosis. And I didn't think to record it until I already had some things written, but we haven't done any of the complicated part yet. So you're caught up. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So we're going to say that, so we've got our three beakers. Each beaker is going to contain a different type of solution. Right. One of them is going to be hypertonic. One of them is going to be isotonic. One of them is going to be hypotonic. Right. But the cell is going to be the same in all of them. OK. OK. So here's my question. We're just going to try to make this simple on ourselves. And we're going to imagine that um, the cell only has glucose and water in it. Right. So glucose is the solute right? Because it's the stuff that's being dissolved into the solvent. Our solvent is water. So if we just, like I said, this is, you know, not true, but we're just going to, you know, kind of make this simple. If we make this super simple on ourselves, um, if the cell contains 2% glucose, how much water would it contain? Eighty <laughs> percent. How how much? Eighty percent. Well, so so we think of percentages as a hundred, right? So if if a hundred percent of the solution, right, oh. is the solute plus the solvent, if it's two percent glucose, it's going to be zero. Ninety eight percent. Oh, okay. I'm going to change my color. It's going to be. I'm going to use this for water. Okay. Right, because 100 minus 2 is 98, yeah? Mm. You guys are like, wait, what? What? Okay. All right, so that's what's in our cell. Okay. And all of our cells are going to be the same. Mm. Okay? So the cell is the same no matter what. Okay? So I like this whole idea of color coding because I think it's easier to follow... And then I'm going to make my water. What color did I decide water was going to be? Come on. Can you zoom out more of your shared page? Or is I don't that know. On my... Can you zoom out? <laughs> I don't know if I can when I'm during the middle of a recording. Oh, okay. It, oh, when I it's, after I it's recorded, I can, you can, um, when it's on video, I think you can zoom. Okay, I see. I did it. Okay, cool. Um, do we understand what I did so far? Okay. What does the black represent? Um, Inside glucose. each cell, what does glucose. the black represent? Glucose. Glucose, okay. And the, the light blue represents? Water. 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 Perfect. Okay. Now let's make ourselves some solutions. Maybe we start with isotonic because I think that will be the easiest one. Probably. Okay. So when a cell is in an isotonic solution, what does that mean? It's the um, same. It's the same concentration of solute, the same amount of solute. Yeah. Okay, so that's easy. So if it's 98% water inside of the cell, then it's 98% water outside of the cell. Yeah, and 2% glucose outside of the cell, right? So because it's the same, <sighs> is anything gonna happen? Now we're assuming that our cell has a permeable membrane. And because we're talking about osmosis, as opposed to diffusion, we're looking at how water moves, okay? So that's like a really important part, right? So osmosis deals with water moving, not solutes.
Okay, so we're talking about water moving. We are not talking about solutes moving when we're um, when we're talking about osmosis. Okay, so Mia, what are you doing? Sorry. So what? Who? What? <laughs> She's dealing with the kids. Okay, so anybody else? What's happening here? Is anything happening? Is anything moving in in our isotonic? When our cell is in an isotonic solution, is anything moving? No. Okay, wait, wait, let me catch up with you. Okay. <laughs> right, so remember, since we're talking about osmosis, we're talking about water moving, not other things, okay? So actually, since the membrane is permeable, water does move, but there is no net movement, okay? So no net movement of water right because a little bit moves in a little bit moves out but overall there's no like bulk flow of water going from one place to another place does that make sense because the concentrations are the same right so maybe we need to even back up one more step and just sort of remind ourselves for a hot second what the definition, let's make that look more like a two, um, what the definition of osmosis is. So osmosis essentially is the diffusion of water, right? So it's movement of water. And which direction is the water going to move in osmosis? Up and down. This is kind of tricky. Maybe let's actually, let's put a pin in that for a second. Let's just, and we'll come back to it when we do a little example. Okay. So which one do you want to do next? Hypertonic or hypotonic? Hypertonic. Hypertonic. Sweet. Okay. Let's do this thing then. All right, so if something is hypertonic, then that means what? If a solution is hypertonic to something else, that means it means it's more solute. More solute, beautiful, thank you. <laughs> I, I can outweigh you guys, just so you know. I, I mean, I can wait all day, I got, I got time. Okay, <laughs> so um, what do we wanna do for more? Let's make sure it's obvious that it's more, right? So it could be instead of 2% glucose, it's 3% glucose, but let's, you know, if we're gonna do this, let's do it, let's do it, okay? So let's make it 15% glucose, right? So this solution that the cell is sitting in is a hypertonic solution because it has 15% glucose, which is way more than 2% glucose. Is that okay for everybody? I can only see five of your faces at a time when I share my screen. So, you know, if you don't happen to be one of the five people that I can see right now, <laughs> yell at me to stop. <laughs> Okay. All right. So it's 15% glucose. So if we go back to our similar logic as before, we're assuming that the solution is only glucose and water, right? So if it's 15% glucose, how much water do we have? Well, it's going to be 100 minus 15, which 85. is 85. Okay. Now, remember that when we're talking about osmosis, we're talking about water moving. We're not talking about the solute moving. If we were talking about the, the solute moving, we'd be talking about diffusion, okay? So, right? So we're talking about osmosis. So the solute cannot move, all right? But the water can. And if the water can move, which way is the, is the water going to move? Mm 
Mm. Is it going to move into the cell, out of the cell? No net movement. What's going to happen? Move away. Out. It's going to move out. Why is it going to move out of the cell? Because it's hyper and it comes out. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> but the reason that it's going to move out is that inside of the cell, it's 98% water. Outside of the cell, it's only 85% water. So what happens in osmosis and diffusion is that things move from areas where there's more of them to areas where there's less of them, right? Spontaneously. Yeah? So the water spontaneously is going to move in this direction. It's going to leave the cell. I'll even draw arrows in other places. It's not just in that one spot. It's everywhere, right? The water is leaving the cell. Are we clear about why it, the water is leaving the cell? You okay mm -hmm. with that? Um, I'm just a little, con a little bit confused on that. Okay, hold on a second. Let me write it down. Okay, so if we go back a second, I don't want to um, switch my screen because I don't, I don't want to mess up our our drawing that we're working on. <laughs> okay, but let's go back, sort of, in from. Let's go back in our topic a little bit back to the idea of diffusion okay so what is the definition of diffusion i'm getting out my book because this is this part is in your book wait i just gotta find the right section Solutes move from areas of high concentration to low concentration. Yes. Okay. So diffusion. So I'm looking, I'm looking at, I know you guys don't necessarily have a paper book, but I'm just going to read directly out of the book. Diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. As when perfume molecules move out of a bottle and into a room. Okay. So this happens based on just vibration of molecules, right? So if, um, so the, <laughs> the other day I was like, my house smells bad. This is, I just, I can't handle this anymore. And so I had a little bottle of lavender essential oil in my bathroom. And so I put a couple drops on a, you know, little cotton ball and just kind of set it on the counter for a while. Right. So all that lavender was trapped in the bottle. But as soon as I took my two little drops of lavender essential oil and took them out of the bottle, what happens to all those odor molecules? What did they do? Did they stay on the cotton ball? They spread all over the room. They spread all over, right? So they spread all over the room. Now, because the weather is so nice, we're doing a lot of, you know, having the windows open in the house now. That'll help with the stink. <laughs> I have a lot of animals, you guys, and small children, and they all smell. Um, so well, so yeah. with the windows open, does it still smell like lavender in my house, you think? No. No, why not? Like maybe because the scent will go away because all the windows it are exits. open. Right. So the lavender kept on moving, right? It's even less concentrated lavender odor molecules outside of the house, right? So it's spread out so much that now I can't notice it anymore. Okay. So that's what diffusion is. Diffusion is when things are highly concentrated and they just spontaneously move to lower concentration, right? That's what diffusion is. Okay. Now, the difference between diffusion and osmosis is that when we're talking about diffusion, we're talking about a solute going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. When we're talking about osmosis, we're talking about water moving from an area where there's more water to an area where there is less water, okay? 
So the reason that the water in, in our little example here that we drew, my bad um, beaker, right? The reason that the water leaves the cell is because there's more water inside the cell because in, inside the cell, it's 98% water. Outside of the cell, it's 85% water. So the water leaves, okay? Does that help? Is that better? Was it Yuritza? Was it you that was asking about that? Yeah. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Or still weird? No, it makes yeah. more sense. Okay. Well, let's do the hypotonic one, mm -hmm. and then and and see how we see how we're doing. Okay. Okay. We'll see, we'll see where we are. Okay. So now in the far right here now we're saying that we're putting our cell in a hypotonic solution and hypotonic means less solute less, less solute okay so if there was two percent glucose two percent solute inside of the cell give me a solution that has less than that <laughs> What's less than 2%? 1%. 1%. Or we could even say 0%, 0 mm -hmm. right? We could say, oh, no, it's just pure water, so there's no solute in there at all. Okay? It doesn't matter which one we pick because either way, it's less than 2. Yeah? Or it could be 1.5. Whatever. It doesn't matter, right? As long as it's less, okay? So what do you want me to do? Do you want me to do 0 or do you want me to do 1%? 0. 0. zero. <laughs> Right. Yes, ma'am. Right away. That was yes, ma'am, for all of you that said that. Okay. Um, so, so we're we've decided that our hypotonic solution is going to be zero percent solute. So, back to that assumption that we were making before. If it's zero percent solute, then how much water is it? A hundred. A hundred percent minus zero is a hundred. Yeah. Okay. Now, because remember, we're talking about osmosis, so we're talking about movement of water. We're not talking about movement of solutes, okay? So which way, that looks like this is 106, and it should say 100. Let me fix that, because that's going to confuse everyone. My handwriting is not the greatest anyway, and on the computer, it's real bad. Okay, so what does that mean? So now what's going to happen with our water? It's going to go in the cell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it's always, the water is all, when we're talking about osmosis, the water is always going to go from where there's more water to where there's less water. Right? Mm -hmm. This is even reminding me of yesterday, our next door neighbors who just moved in. So we haven't met them yet, but on our, on the one side, our next door neighbors, um, they were gone all day and there was something in their yard that was like just pouring water. Like somebody had left the, like the hose on a hundred percent or a sprinkler got broken or something. Wow. And it was just, it was just like, just a torrent of water. We could hear it. Right. Wow. And, and our, we have a block wall between our house. The block wall was like soaking wet. Wow. <laughs> it was like they had like a flood. And so we went over there and knocked. Nobody was home. And because they had just moved in, we didn't have their phone numbers yet, like uh. cell phone numbers. So, so, you know, so we ended up calling like um, the non-emergency phone number for the police to be like, can somebody go over there? Cause we don't want to get in trouble for like, you know, jumping in their backyard mm -hmm. and messing with their stuff. But also, you know, we don't want their whole backyard to flood and you know, <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, they finally came home and they turned it off and it was fine. But um, but where was the water going? Well, the water wasn't just trying to stay in their yard, right? Because there was a ton of water in their yard. The water was going to come into our yard, right? So the water always goes from where there's more water to where there's less water. <laughs> That's the moral of my, you know, story, right? So therefore, since there's more water, a greater percentage of water outside of the cell than inside of the cell, the water is going to go... 
into. Okay. How are we with all of this so far? Is this part all okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to make it more complicated, but I want, <laughs> but I don't want to make it more complicated until I know that y'all are okay with this where it is. One of my chickens is freaking out back there. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but somebody's like, Wah! I think they're laying a big egg. Uh, oh no. <laughs> It's like hens are supposed to be quiet. Roosters are supposed to be loud. But every so often, one of these hens is just like, I got to tell everybody right now that I'm laying an egg and it's a big one and I'm going to make a lot of noise about it. Maybe there's a predator. No, this isn't predator noises. Predator noises are like screaming afraid. This is, oh, yeah, a, no. this is the like, <laughs> I'm, I'm angry because I have to lay this giant egg. It's a, yeah, <laughs> it's a different noise. <laughs> uh anyway oh i forgot to write this down so okay can i make it more difficult are we ready for that or will that make us go crazy Could erase it if you want. I don't want to erase it. I just want to make it more complicated. <laughs> Can I make it more complicated? More than it is? Yeah. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try something, okay? And keep in mind also that this is since since you guys were okay with me recording it, this is gonna be recorded. So you know if you're get if you get lost real fast right now you can always go back right and watch it later and rewind okay so you know just keep in mind that that's an option so i am going to now i'm going to add to this so before we we're just like it's a generic oval shaped thing that's our cell now we're going to specifically decide that this is an animal cell it's not just any old kind of cell it's an animal cell all right. Why does that matter? Well, animal cells, as we recall from what we were looking at earlier, animal cells do do or do not have a cell wall. They don't. They don't. Exactly. Right. So everybody, all cells have a plasma membrane. But remember, plasma membranes are flexible, but cell walls are like rigid. Yeah. OK, so. If an animal cell is placed in a hypertonic solution and it is hypertonic enough, what's eventually going to happen to that whole cell? What's going to happen to it as the water's leaving it, right? So let's say that my cell started off looking like this. What's going to happen to it over time? It's going to shrivel up. Yeah, it's going to shrink and shrivel up, right? Because water's leaving it. <laughs> so there's my shriveled cell, right? So if water's leaving it, right, it's going to shrivel up. That's okay, right? I'm scrolling down to look at your faces. Is this okay? <laughs> give, me, give me the sad face or the thumbs down if it's not okay. Okay. <laughs> my um my kindergarten teacher does sign language with the kids. She's like, this is yes, this is no. <laughs> yeah. So give me the no that. if it's not it's not I okay. Know that. It's not yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, she doesn't need to have them do sign language. They can just go. What? Anyway. Okay. Because the names are easy though to do sign language. <laughs> okay, so isotonic. If we have an animal cell in an isotonic solution, so it starts off being a you know plump little oval okay what's going to happen over time 
in an isotonic solution to an animal cell. It's going to stay the same? It's going to stay the same, right? Because, you know, little water goes, that's supposed to be the same. Anyway, <laughs> right? little water goes in, little water goes out. But there's no, it, it's not like there's a, you know, net flow of water. There's not a, you know, abundance of water moving in or moving out. It's just a little here, little there. So overall, nothing. Okay. All right. What happens now if we put our animal cell in a hypotonic solution? It'll fill up, overfill. Okay. Explode. And if it overfills enough, it'll explode. It's an exploding cell. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, oh, I hear the screenshotting. I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> right? It'll, it'll, it'll pop. Yeah. Just like if you tried to overfill a water balloon. Right. Or, or just a regular balloon of helium. Right. If you fill it too much, eventually it explodes. Right. So if water keeps going in and keeps going in and keeps going in and keeps going in, it'll eventually explode. Okay. All right. I'm going to erase the animal part. And now we're going to imagine that it's a plant. Okay. So back to here, but now I'm going to do green for plant. Okay. So now we're talking about a plant cell instead of an animal cell. So aside from, you know, having chloroplasts, what's another pretty significant difference between plant cells and animal cells? The cell wall. Cell wall. All right, sweet. So here's my cell. And my cell is inside of a box, <laughs> right? Essentially, the cell wall is outside of the plasma membrane, and it's kind of like a box. So if I have my cell sitting in a box, and I put it in a hypertonic solution, what's going to happen? I'll draw the box. What's going to happen to the cell? Is it going to shrink? Yeah, right? So it's going to it's still going to shrivel because water is still leaving the cell. That hasn't changed, right? The osmosis part is the same whether you're talking about an animal or a plant, right? But what's different is what it looks like. So instead of just shriveling, right? What it does is it kind of like shrivels inside of the box. Okay? Now, the thing about cell walls is they're pretty strong. But I mean, they're only so strong, <laughs> okay? And so after, you know, if it shrivels enough, eventually the weight of the plant, right? Because remember these cells are not in, you know, if we put it in a beaker, it wouldn't necessarily go down this way. But if it was inside of an entire plant, like a whole living plant, if the cell shriveled enough, you would just have this box around, you know, essentially an empty space and the weight of the plant would crush that little box. Right. It's like, you know, a shoe box is only so sturdy. And if you have an empty shoe box and then you step on it, it's going to crack and break. Right. And so that would happen, too, if we if the cell got all shriveled up. So eventually what might happen is the cell wall like breaks apart. And if the cell wall breaks then it might poke the cell and kill the cell completely, okay? So the cell wall literally might, uh, might break down like, you know, like cardboard, like cardboard, like an empty cardboard box. If you step on it, it just breaks, okay? Okay, is that okay? Scrolling to look at faces. 
or in the case of Stephanie, her forehead. <laughs> oh, zooming is ridiculous. Okay, let's do a plant cell in a... That, okay, I no, no, that's just, that's ridiculous. Let's, let's try that again. Let's try that again. Okay, so now we're imagining our plant cell <clears throat> is in an isotonic solution. What's going to happen to our plant cell over time? Stay the same. We'll stay the same. Trying to draw something that looks the same. That's eh, not bad. So it's the same. Which is fine, I guess. Okay. Now let's put our plant cell in a hypotonic solution. So there's my plant cell. And so what happens over time if my plant cell is in a hypotonic solution? And this is weird. Mm -hmm. This is the whole reason why we're having the conversation. What's gonna happen to it? Die. So the water is going to move into the cell, right? Okay. So in our animal cell, what happened when the water moved into the cell? What happened to our animal cell when water was moving into it? Did it fill up also? And explode? Well, our animal cell exploded. Yeah. And the animal right? Okay, but what's cool about plant cells, they don't explode. Okay, and the reason that they don't explode they, is that the cell wall is strong enough that they get real, real full, but then it basically no more water can get in, right? Because it's like, nope, we're full, we're full, sorry, sorry, right? So it's almost like, let me, I'm trying to draw my cell in here. Do they keep their shape because of the cytoskeleton? Does Not because of the cyto. Enough? So cytoskeleton is, let's put a pin in that for a second. We'll come back to cytoskeleton in a second. Okay. So let me just, what I, what I want to say about this. So the difference between a animal cell and a plant cell that's in a hypotonic solution is a animal cell is like a balloon. If you try to overfill a balloon, eventually it pops, right? Let's imagine that a plant cell is like a um, plastic jug, a strong plastic jug, right? Or a plastic bottle. If I try to put more water in here than it can hold, is it going to pop? It'll just spill out. It'll just stop accepting more water. It's just mm -hmm. like, no, there's no, I'm, no, there's no more room in here, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It'll be completely full, but it won't allow any more water in because it's, because it's full. Is that, yeah? So it won't pop because it's, because it's hard, right? That's what the cell wall does. So the cell gets as big as possible within the space that it has right? But then the cell wall doesn't allow any extra water into it, right? And so we have a description for what that's called. We say that the cell is now turgid, T-U-R-G-I-D. That's, okay, I'm not going to rewrite it because I won't be able to write it better. T-U-R-G-I-D, turgid. And basically what that means is that cell is as full of water as it can possibly get. And it's pushed all the way up against its cell wall, right? So it's mm -hmm. like fat and full of water. Yes. And this is beneficial for plants because if all of the cells are turgid, are super fat and full of water, then they're all like pushing on each other. And if they're all pushing on each other, then they can stand up against gravity than if they're not pushing on each other. If they're not pushing on each other, it's kind of like, kind of slumpy, right? If they're not all pushing on each other, but if they're all 
like pushing up on their walls and pushed on each other, right? Then they're standing up and the plant stands up. The cells stand up, right? So grass, the reason that each blade of grass sticks up like this is because each of those cells is so full of water, it's turgid, yeah, that they like push against each other and the whole thing stands up. Does that make sense? Okay, so while being in an isotonic environment is not necessarily harmful to a plant cell, it's fine temporarily, right? It's not harmful, but plant cells, where they are most, they're, at, they're living their best life <laughs> is when they're in a hypotonic situation, right? This is why when you're watering your plants in your yard or house plants or whatever, you give them water as opposed to salt water or sugar water or something else, right? If you, the, the quickest way to kill a plant is water it with salt water. Because if you water a plant with salt water, what you're doing is you're putting it in a hypertonic environment. The cells will all uh, uh, shrivel up and die. What about right. when you overwater a plant and it dies? Well, that's a different that's issue. Different? <laughs> that's a different problem. And quite frankly, I haven't, um, I can't keep plants alive to save my life. Yeah, me and neither. I think it's because um, I need, I need to care for things that tell me when they need something. I'm really bad with fish too, because like, I, I, they can't remind me that they're hungry. Like my dogs, they're like, yo, you haven't fed me yet. I'm going to bark at you or, you know, bonk you with my nose until you feed me. Right. I can't, I can't be held responsible for organisms that don't tell me what they need. Um, so yeah, so I'm not good with plants. I do the same thing. I either over, I either pay too much attention to them and I water them too much or I completely forget about them. There's some dead plants in my office at school right now. Cause I haven't been, in, you know, I haven't been there in a million years. Anyway, um, overwatering is a different complication. It's a different, pro it's a different thing that makes them sick. It's not because they're normally they're happy in a hypotonic situation. It's usually because like what ends up happening is like the roots start rotting because there's too much water in the soil. And, you know, so it's a different problem. Is that cool? Okay. Now this, all of this stuff is actually really, really important for the second part of the lab right? Because the first part of the lab, you're just talking about diffusion of substances across that membrane. So the first part of the lab, our dialysis tubing is our membrane, and we're putting some stuff in there. And we're just looking to see which things cross the membrane, which things go in, which things go out, right? It's, it's diffusion, okay? Pretty straightforward, mostly, okay? Um, but the second part of the lab, we're doing... Um, osmosis with a vegetable of some sort okay and so normally I use potatoes but you know use whatever you have on hand right and so um, I made some suggestions in the lab about what kinds of um, plants to what kinds of vegetables to use um, I would use any kind of root vegetable I tried it with what I had on hand which was a potato a carrot and a radish the carrot didn't work as well um, and I think it's because carrots are kind of um woodier than some of the other root vegetables. So for my, the ones that I tested, the potato worked great. The radish even worked great. Um, but use whatever you have, whatever kind of root vegetable you have, you know, you don't need much. You just need like three slices. So you need this much. Okay. Um, and um, follow the directions. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be finding out in real time what is happening to the cells of that root vegetable by putting it in different solutions. Okay. Does it have to be a vegetable? Yes. Okay. It has to be a vegetable. Okay. So it, whatever, you know, like I said, it can be anything as long as it's raw. Don't try to use something cooked. I should probably mention that explicitly in the lab because somebody's going to be like, oh, I just going to, I'm going to use some, you know, I'm going to use French fries. That'll work. Right. That's, a, that's a potato. <laughs> has to be raw. It has to be unprepared. It has to be something that you sliced yourself. Okay, but whatever, you, literally whatever you have, right? So, you know, and if you're like, I have no veggies at home, go to, go to your next door neighbor and be like, can I borrow a radish? 
<laughs> yeah, we're but, I'm not there's not really a vegetable, but I think it's just nice something. <laughs> are you there all day though? Um, or all week? You got until Friday. Yeah. yeah, no, I got yeah, I got there on Thursday. I've been here since Thursday. Do you have you and you're staying on campus twenty four seven this whole time? No. No, I mean I'm over here visiting you for a week. Oh, well, but, so, but I have, I have, I volunteer events over here. So mm-hmm. that's why we come to this campus because there's cool. events that's so cool. I help out. So that's cool. why I'm not really at home all the time. Yeah, so. that's okay. That's fine. Oh, okay. So in the evening, sometimes, you know, when you're done for the day, yeah. right? Yeah. Get a radish or a potato or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, does that all make sense? Are we cool with that? Mm-hmm. Anybody else? I'm scrolling. We're good. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna stop good. recording because. Yes, stop recording. <laughs>